So this month, I've got some supermarket irises. Good afternoon everybody and welcome back. Now today I'm going to use quite a tall container. It's um, a ceramic vase that I've picked up in a charity shop, my favourite place to buy containers. And in the supermarkets at the moment, and it's, it does it does annoy me slightly because we're in the autumn here in the UK and I have irises and obviously an iris is a spring flower and for me it's not very seasonal but it was a fairly inexpensive bunch of flowers to buy and it is something that you might want to pick up and have a go at arranging and the cream container I thought would pick up the yellow colouring on the centre of the irises and I'm not quite sure how many were in the bunch, we'll count them as we work our way through. But I have got two that have been cut down short because I used them in last night's class. So these I'm going to aim for the centre with my focal point, but the rest of them are the full length that I bought them from the supermarket. Now, I was a bit concerned that the delicate nature of the iris wasn't going to connect very well with my container. It's quite a solid container. And what I thought I would do is introduce, um, this is contorted hazel, possibly. It's one that I've been given. And my worry was if I was going to insert this straight into the floral foam, it was going to be very heavy. It was going to make the design a little bit unstable and it was going to use up a vast amount of my floral foam. So what I'm hoping to do, and this is a bit of an experiment, I haven't practiced it beforehand, I'm going to try and get my foam to sit alongside that structure and that strong linear movement that I get from that contorted hazel. Now it happens to sit quite comfortably there in the vase and what I'm going to try and do is insert my foam down on the side here. We might have to pause the video for me to fiddle around a little bit with it, but let's see what we can do. Now, because my container has these decorative holes in it, I don't want to insert a large piece of floral foam because you'll see the green through the decorative sections. So I've cut myself a cream piece of cellophane. You could have done it with something that was blue so that it would link really well with your irises but I've got plenty of cream cellophane here and what I'm going to try to do is to get my cellophane which will help waterproof the container and stop the water from running into the base of my design. I'm going to try and you put the cellophane and my piece of floral foam in at the same time. Could be a disaster, might end up as a comedy sketch but we'll have a little go. You could could use a large piece of floral foam that fits the whole size of your container. You could have added some sand or some gravel at the bottom for weight. But I'm thinking if I wedge it all in there together, it's going to work quite well. There we are. So I'm going to remove the cellophane in the, mid in the minute, but you can see I've wedged the two into my container quite successfully. And now I can cut off the plastic edge. I will then have a waterproofed floral foam. So when I add water to it, it's not going to run to the bottom of the container. You can't see any unsightly foam through this section here. And I'm generally quite pleased with how that's worked out. Okay, so I've cut off the excess cellophane and I'm just going to push it down. So hopefully you can't see it while I'm working. So I'm thinking that this section here, branching off to my right hand side, works really well as the front. So if we turn that around to you there, this is the area that I think suits the front position. I did initially think this was going to work better, but now I've pushed the foam in and it's slightly dislodged the bit of branch. I'm gonna work in the opposite direction, but it's going to give me a beautiful, very casual upward movement with the linear shape of the willow or possibly the hazel. It's hazel. I did this once before, didn't I? I kept calling it willow and it was hazel, but never mind. Right, now I'm going to hopefully lock four and find one of the irises that hasn't yet opened because that's going to work 
in my higher position. I'm going to remove some of the outward leaves because they can sometimes look a bit unsightly. Fresh cut on the bottom. Now an iris is a soft stem flower so if you cut it at an angle like this here you will find it harder to get into the foam. If you cut it straight you've got more strength at the base of the stem there to insert into the foam. And I'm hopefully going to follow the curve that's been created by that contorted piece of hazel. What I'm hoping to do is to sort of almost swing it round this way towards the base. But we're going to have to see which way my irises are growing and which way they're shaped. Now I'm lucky enough to have two that haven't quite opened. So these are going to be my taller flowers. If yours are already open or they're still in bed, then just work quite casually, bring in that shape down from top to bottom. I've just moved the camera back slightly so you get a, a fuller view of the top of the design. I'm hoping to sweep it forward and if I have the option, I'll use a more open flower as I work towards the front. Now you might be wondering why I've put my floral foam below the edge of the container. You can't see anything raised over the side of the vase there. And that's intentional. That's because I don't want to overfill the base section with too many flowers. And I want to keep the design quite simple. And this is a good one to do if you're a beginner. Don't worry too much if you don't have that lovely piece of twisted branch. You can do exactly the same with the irises. Um, I've added another iris in the scap here because I found another one that was not fully open. And I'm, I'm going to keep working down. There's a lovely, very um, simple curve to these. They're not prominently curved, but they are slightly bending to one side. Okay, now this one is a little bit more open, so we're stepping them down. The gap between each head is fairly similar. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. We're going to work our way down to the bottom. And if you've got some of the pin holders, the original mechanic for floral design, what we used to use before floral foam was invented. This is a lovely design to do using those old fashioned pin holders. Okay, so as we come now down towards the bottom, you can see that in this section here is going to be the more open irises, the ones that I've already cut down low. And I've just brought a little side movement with the iris. It's almost like an L shape, a backwards L shape in this instance. But the irises are wonderfully shaped and they give me that nice movement off to one side. Okay, so we've only got three left now. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 12. We've got 12 stems. You could do exactly the same thing with some carnations or a simple bunch of roses. It's just that I don't often arrange with the iris. A complementary or a contrasting colour, so if you had a yellow flower to go with these that would work really well as well. And then what I'm doing with the shorter irises, the ones that were already cut, I've placed them lower down to create a stronger focal point. Now what I've decided is this one is a little bit sticking out on its own so I'm going to move it onto the opposite side and I'm going to bring it into this position here. This is going to help draw your eye towards the back and give me that depth that I talk about all the time and it's now made the design a little bit more slimline. So originally I felt I was going to go L-shaped but I feel now that that cluster of irises there in the centre works much better. Now we need to consider covering our floral foam, which from where you're watching, you probably can't see any of the floral foam. But what I'm going to do is to use some larger leaves, and I've got two types to work with. This one is a fats hedera. So this is a cross between a fatsia and a hedera, which is the basic ivy. So we call this fats hedera. Could be a large ivy leaf, could be a hosta leaf if you've got those growing in the garden at this time of year, could even be a large begonia. 
but all we want to do is cover the floral foam so I don't want to overfill it and make it too fussy there at the base. So these large leaves are going to work really really well. I'm going to cluster them round the centre section where the floral foam needs covering. I might find that these four leaves are going to be enough and you know in floral design we encourage you to use threes and fives and sevens but sometimes if it's four leaves you can get hold of and it's 12 irises that you've got to use then don't worry too much about remembering to use specific quantities of material. So if I turn that round now it's hopefully given the design a stronger focal point at the bottom and it's helped to cover the floral foam. If I go all the way around to the back section I've got a leaf at the back there to give me some depth as well and now what I'm going to do I've got some Camellia leaves, I've already cut them short just really to speed up the length of the video and I'm going to use them to contrast. The, there's not a great deal in contrasting colour but the shape is quite different. I don't need a lot of them, I just need to cover the last remaining bits of floral foam and a couple, two or three pieces there at the bottom is probably going to be ample. You now can't see my plastic cellophane that I used to waterproof the design and from where I'm looking which is down on the arrangement then you can't see the floral foam either. If you didn't have any foliage you could simply use some moss in there just to cover the foam or some gravel, some decorative beads and that's today's design, quite simple, just two different types of foliage a beautiful piece of contorted willow at the back which gave me some height and softened the very regimented shapes of my iris and a very casual line of irises brought down to the front. Height wise I went at about twice the height of my container so once twice and I've introduced a very soft line with my irises. So I hope you've enjoyed that one, this might be a quick video because often my videos are fairly long because I like to include quite a lot of theory. If you're interested in participating in an online 10 week course then please email me on sharondower at hotmail.com. If you haven't met me before, I haven't introduced myself, my name is Sharon and I teach lots of workshops and classes and you'll find a whole host of videos here on YouTube to explain floral design to you. So thanks for watching, if it's your first time hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell if you want to be told every time I upload a new video. Thank you very much for watching, we'll see you again very soon, bye for now.